What's up, everybody? Timber builds back in grounded. Finally, doing an upgrade, updated. I perfected my pagoda base, um, but honestly, now with new game plus uh, coming out in 1.4, I am so excited to be able to jump back into this base and have a reason to just keep upgrading it and making it better. Uh, continuing on all the hard work that I put into it, because now uh, for every playthrough, I just get a epic base to play in. So all this hard work has really paid off and has been. It's going to make New Game Plus really, really fun. All the grinding was definitely worth it because um, I don't see myself being able to stop playing this game anytime soon, especially with all this new content and endless kind of infinite looping avail available. So this is my first big upgrade. Added um, a new gate, sort of entrance gate. Um, the previous one was just a crappy stem little armory thing I never really liked, but I was just protecting my base. Uh, wasn't very necessary. This looks a lot better with the base. I might change it now that New Game Plus is coming out and I have infinite playability. Um, but it was a good start and it's been a lot of fun. I'm just enjoying pushing the boundaries of building and messing with different designs and materials together, the different shapes and walls to create little interesting um, builds and just to show people how crazy the building mechanics in this game are and how kind of limitless they can be if you really get in and learn uh, how everything works and you put the time in because you can build epic epic bases and it's so much fun and it creates a reason to keep playing the game for me and now that there's new game plus it just keeps going uh, infinite fun this is just my rainbow road just repeated all the way down I love it but I also want to run towards the base um a lot of the changes or aesthetics um, overall a lot of the base has stayed the same layout but i've improved on a ton of things at been able to fix things that i hated um, because the other updates didn't have like the quarter pieces are making a huge difference in being able to just kind of complete things make it look a little more finished not have weird pieces that i'm not happy with um, the sap area has been completely overhauled i like doubled or more the amount of sap so you know you can get like 300 something off of this so it's all the sap i'll ever need and just fills up the space better and with all the sap i ever need i also have feather collecting because um, along with building all of these sap sconces that are literally everywhere you need a lot of sap and this is where feathers fall conveniently right next to my base when the crow lands up there um, so they fall there and I can collect them easier now still have the same sort of flying buttresses that come off of the build nothing too crazy there but just fun little designs repeated um, all the way along still have these little same little thing as the other side i use this one for like building little designs and stuff i see like this was on discord someone built this and i had to replicate it and see how i could use it in my build so it gives me a little place to sort of prototype things and mess with different materials and things they add rainbow bridges are kind of my thing on this I got my new shooting range for all the new targets and stuff to use with the bows that i never use because i hate ranged other than the staffs so little redundant but i had to show this base has every single item of every kind in it um it does all of the things so there had to be a shooting range you know also completely redid the entire uh gardening area put more made it bigger did some under lighting which i'll show off in a second to make all these glow at night which looks epic got the super growth stuff um so everything is kind of the most epic version of it looks really cool have my uh, stem palettes and all that stuff here because um, I get a lot of stems from over there and then this is my little wafter emitter sort of just a replica of the uh, little front gate entrance but now there's a little square for the rot waft emitters and it's a great spot for it because it keeps everything far away from all of this hard work um, and just funnels them all in so everything has to get through there and they can't get to my base and weird do weird things and destroy stuff <laughs>
stuff. So it works really well. Um, if you want to see underneath, this is what it looks like if you want to repeat this. Really simple, just um, scaffold with pebblet foundations, and then you can sort of clip the sconces into the scaffolding, and that's what gives you the underlighting effect. And at night, it looks epic. Much more useful garden, has all the stuff, all the things, so I always have everything. And I still end up going and collecting a lot of stuff, but this makes it easy if I just need a couple mushrooms or just a couple little things. Also, when the infected bugs spawn in, um, when you plug the haze, this is just my little base to keep them away because they endlessly destroy it. So that's why this is all still uh, stem walls because it's way too expensive to constantly fix as they just slowly blow it to pieces. <laughs> Um, another fun little upgrade I did is I added this Harry Potter sort of inspired boathouse, um, sort of replicated off of Harry Potter's boathouse um, in the castle. I uh, got a little walkway going down. But it's actually just my pet barn. Also makes an easy way to get to and from the water. Have conveniently uh, six little pet homes, pet houses, and that'll be convenient because you've got the gnat, the aphid, the weevil, and then the new three ant uh, pets that you'll be able to get with the ant queens. It's a super functional little base too. Um, it's all my pallet storage. Uh, I can bring these over from the other side or bring pallets in and they still reach um, other than the last one, they all reach uh, my crafting table inside, and so I can use all of those from uh, inside the base, which is really convenient, and just have a lot of fun little details, using a lot of the quarter triangle pieces and stuff they added to the game, um, just makes a lot of fun little details and stuff. Love finding unique little things like how the pallets sort of stick through and create a nice little kind of roof detail. Love how this looks, it's a fun little thing. Those are a little awkward, but you know, it happens. Just had a lot of fun messing with the new building types in here. I also have, by creating this walkway, made this weird little space, so I decided to make a little grotto. And this is where I can go hot tub in, sort of a sauna room with the fireplace, gongs, cause why not, right? Uh, just having fun. I wanted to create sort of unique places for all the different items in the game that sort of feel like they're meant to be there, not just like putting them in a base to put them in a base. Um, the inside of this base have been massively, massively relayed out. It's all sort of the same functioning space, but overall I've been able to double the amount of cookeries and also the fresh storage and all that stuff fits way better. I've been able to fit even more ovens. All of the chests have been upgraded to the large storage chests, reorganized like the grinders so they're more efficient. I created this little forge, which is super epic and took ages. Uh, I will do a little build tips video on how to clip things like this. Uh, it's hard work and it takes a while, but I have helped two other people recreate this before. Um, if you want to join my Discord, happy to help. I have tons of pictures and things to look at as reference if you want to build out this base. because I honestly think this is the best base place in the game. The fact that your science station is just located right inside of your base is just the most convenient thing ever. Um, something I hadn't mentioned yet, if you haven't seen my other Pagoda Base tour, you should definitely go check that out. Um, 
but each wall of this is built on its own grid. Um, so all of the walls clip into the corners, which you can actually sort of see now with the handy net. Um, it's a bit funky. Sorry if this is messing up your eyes, but they clip, all the walls clip into these little columns. Uh, sorry about that, a little hard to see. But everything clips in. Uh, you cannot achieve these angles on the normal grid, so you have to build out from the inside, from the middle to the edges, and then repeat it all the way up. So every wall you see on this is built individually all the way to the very top. And then these floors are built onto the back wall um, and then clip into the other stuff. And that's all done non-modded. You can do it on PC, Xbox, P PlayStation, and Switch. Um, if you build a base this big on the consoles, you may break the game. Uh, I run a pretty high-end PC these days uh, that allows me to do all of this craziness because all the lighting um, definitely has a major effect on the game's performance if you don't have a good machine running it. Um, but this is my elevator. Nothing crazy. Built a little sort of a smithing station here with a pedestal. I'll probably add another one for the new yoking station and sort of add that or maybe just move this one over to the corner and be sad because the yoking station is way more epic looking. All the chests work. Everything is close enough to each other that everything functions off of the thing. So you can build and make anything from anywhere in this base. You don't actually, you don't have to move anything out of the chests. It all works. So it's really, really functional on top of just being big and epic. Got the uh, Mantis Triforce right there. And then some people um, from the old days before this thing made all of my work redundant um, and pointless. This was a water collector. So up above there's dew collectors that fall, hit the roofs, and then land in the water containers. Super epic, made endless water, so I never have to worry about it. And then they added in the mantis fountain, which is just endless water. So I just placed it next to it just as a joke because now this is all redundant. But it was so much time and effort designing it and figuring it out that I just had to keep it. Um, jerky racks are now way more efficient. I place them all up on a quarter block and then now you can just run underneath and get all the stuff which you can't do before so they took up way more space so this is definitely the most efficient way to set up your jerky racks and get a ton of them in a really really small little space. Looks way more organized. Then I still have my little balcony for chilling, relaxing out here, the, uh, the brood mother rocking chair and the mantis or the uh, Wasp Queen Hammock. Fun little additions. Love all the new stuff they've been adding like that. This space stayed roughly the same. I did some adjustments. Now you can see the dew collectors that go down um, and then in fall into the water collectors. You can kind of see how this works. You just have to balance them across. It's a little annoying and a pain to do, but once you do it, it works great. Um, but the Mantis Fountain sort of made that pointless. But it looks epic, and I put all the effort in, so I'm keeping it. Um, kind of redid some of this stuff, the walls with the quarter pieces that they added. This stuff works a little bit better now. Have all the decor and everything in this little area. I did completely redo a lot of this, added in these little kind of heart things for my base and added these window spaces in just to sort of reflect the uh, concrete with mushroom brick, which is why, which is really what made me fall in love with the Pagoda base is I set that in because these are all double thick walls. Um, it can be a hard, a bit hard to tell, but they are too thick. So there's an inner wall for this inside and then an outer wall that's just a half wall thick um, that allows you to inset the mushroom brick a little bit. And I may put out a, a Pagoda Base how-to video I had started. It's just a complicated process rebuilding it in creative. It takes a lot of time and effort and editing, but I am kind of working on that. Um, and definitely I had enough people show interest um, in this build. And if I should get more of it, I'll definitely be hyped up to work on a base um, build guide. Because I think just showing people how to build the outside of this um, and then leave the inside open and kind of you can do whatever you want. It's a really easy to build from there. It's just once you get the walls for the outside set up, it makes it really easy. Um, what you just heard was the crow landing on the base, which we we'll might see here in a minute. <laughs> this is the bug uh, stuffed bug museum. Have all the bosses sort of in the boss room. Sir, can you quiet down? And then, um, or boss-like creatures too, since Black Widow's not really a boss and neither is the moth, but the tier three higher level things. Um, and then when you come up around the outside, all of the stuffed, rest of the stuffed bugs and the wall mounts 
are all put here and they go all the way 360 degrees around this base every single one's up here all the new bugs and I even have some room for some if they do add more bug mounts even though I'm not sure if there's new bugs of any kind um, if you're able to build the ant queens I have an extra space or two so I might be able to fit some more stuff in here a couple spots around and then I also doubled the thickness or added a, uh, a vertical half wall here to allow the bugs to sit back a little further because I didn't like them clipping through to the outside but now I don't have to worry about that and everything fits there's more space filled in a lot of little gaps with the quarter blocks that you just weren't able to before and that allowed some of this funky building sort of shelving stuff to work um, and then we'll head all the way back downstairs I could use the elevator since each floor goes there but I do like using it from the bottom uh, just to show off the whole thing uh, since a lot of people have rebuilt parts of this base just from watching the base tours I've done um, so this is my bounce tower that goes all the way up then you go out to the brim of the pagoda around and back in I redid all of these and sort of made little storage areas. I'll probably eventually fill out with stuff, chest storage and stuff. There's the crow for everyone wondering. He does land on the base and he's my little my little crow friend, just chilling. He clips through, he doesn't break anything. Um, you can sort of, he'll clip you into the base randomly if you're not careful as a character, but the handy net doesn't really care. Um, also, this is my armory, which has been massively upgraded. Changed a lot of this to ash, uh, ash cement. Of all the weapons, all the armors, and space for more for all the new tier four stuff and different variants of things. But this goes sort of just replicated, replicated 360 degrees around the entire base. Um, sort of have them organized by class or different types um, of builds. Some of them are builds that I like. Some of them are, are showing off different armor pieces. Yes, you can leave anytime, Mr. Crow. I also completely redid all of these little spaces. I'm very happy with how these turned out. I had a lot of fun with the crow awnings, the uh, crow feather awnings. They sort of look like windows now, and you can really mess with them and do interesting window effects that you just didn't have the ability to do. These would all have to be open previously. There was no way to make like cool shapes like this, so these, these are really cool, and I think there's a lot of more interesting ways to use these that I have not even touch the surface of but each one of these is a different color that correlates to the different upper spaces just had fun with it but they all just replicated and i have a little bit of footage of me building these two
for people. Another massive update is this upper area here had literally nothing in it. It was just empty, and I ended up filling in the gap of uh, this where the roof was made to make these walls, and now this is my art gallery. So it has every single piece of art in the game uh, put up on the wall, all in order of how they show. And then uh, there were so many of them, especially with the new ones they added. They even go onto the inside here, and I have extra space to keep it going. Um, so very happy with how this turned out. I definitely like this base because it, it literally shows off every item of every kind in the game in some way, shape, or form. So it really is, to me, just the perfect base. It's kind of turned out. It's crazy how it's all fit, out, fit and filled out so well. Um, but I'm very happy with how this has turned out. I think the only thing I was always a little disappointed with is the... Uh, big tower uh zipline tower i made it has always been functional but it never just looked the way i wanted i turned it into a very simple floating island um previously and this was a big part i was going to show off but with 1.4 coming out they're introducing teleporters so you no longer need to do any of this garbage this stuff sucks half the reason i made this world into a custom was for the handy net because building zipline towers was horrendous and horrible. I hated scaffolding and breaking things. This thing's super functional and it turned out fine. It works, but now I get to uh, probably one of the first streams I'm hoping on doing once the 1.4 update is out. We'll be destroying this entire thing um, all the way down. And then we are going to work um, on a teleporter area. And so I'll destroy a lot of this little stuff maybe read lay out a lot of this um i'll probably keep all this the same but delete right up to there make this just more of a functioning thing since i don't need to bounce up anymore and then i'll turn all of this area around the top into a cool sort of teleporter base and we'll just kind of have fun i don't really have any ideas of how that's going to work but i'm gonna have a blast uh doing it and the fact that teleporters are a thing is going to save me hours of time because i have to go over there and back and forth all the time um, to get up to the upper yard to get resources and stuff finally after i don't know 1400 something stinking days i have all the gold cards so we're bringing a hundred percent game into new game plus with all these items and these bases is going to be so epic super fun i'm going to be trying to stream a few days a week um because i am a little i got burnt out pretty bad on making videos and all the editing um with a young kid just not don't have quite the time i would like but i'd love to just play the game and interact with people answer questions so i think streaming is gonna be a great opportunity with my vast knowledge of playing this game so much to help new players from playstation and switch and just show off the building, work with other builders. I think um, since see-through has sort of left the grounded community in the dust, I would love to pick up his amazing work of doing base tours. Uh, so if anyone has bases, older players on PC and Xbox that never showed their stuff off um, when see-through was doing them, I'd love to just reach out to me on my Discord. Uh, hit me up, and I would love to do base tours in any of the PlayStation and Switch people. Um, once you start getting in to the game and you start building stuff, if you think you have something epic, it definitely doesn't need to be this crazy. Um, it really doesn't. It can be anything cool, anything you think is fun and different. I'm happy to do a video on it. I'm not really worried about YouTube metrics and stuff. I just want to show off people people's builds and the stuff they put a ton of time into. That's really how I got started in content creation um, is I built this epic base and was like, what was the point of all of that? If I don't let anyone see it and see through said that I should get on his channel and do a base tour to show it off. And because of that, I now make YouTube videos on grounded and I have this super epic base. Um, if you haven't checked it out also on my live streams, we will be working on my, king's landing themed sandcastle sort of build that currently takes up about half of the sandbox and it's only going to get more epic if you haven't checked out that video you should check out a couple of the videos i've done on that and i've made that even more epic and i'm super excited to show that stuff off but um until next time guys super excited for 1.4 let's go out and build some crazy things